All right, welcome back, guys. Jed took care of the beveling machine part of this, and so uh, I let him do all that. He knows how to do it really well. He cleaned up this coupon for the most part for you. We didn't have a grinding disc, so I had to run to the store and go grab one, but everybody gets the idea of the bevel machine. Now, if you're going to be a fitter, and you're going to be a welder, um, bevel machines are a must, must. And I love the Matthew Dearman machines. They've been just a good machine. They do a really great job with uh, timing their machines and just they're just a good all around machine. I don't know how else to say it, but I uh, got the old fire finally cranking up in here. But for everybody else that can't either afford a beveling machine right now, doesn't really need one right now, um, we're gonna talk about hand cutting. We got a piece of eight inch, which is the same piece that come off of this. Now let me tell you, if you hand cut stuff, it is gonna take you three times longer than to just cut it with that, all right? It's gonna take you so much longer to do this, but if it's the only option you have, or you're in the rack, and there's just no other way to go about doing it, okay, you, then this is the way we're gonna do it. But, uh, a wrap around. Now, as far as being a fitter, you do need a wrap around. This is called a wrap around. It's uh, just about a four inch piece of black paper, basically. It kind of reminds me of like tar paper a little bit, but it's it's got all, all these measurements on it. It's got all sorts of good info on it. Um, <coughs> oh man, I never really noticed that actual pipe OD. So it's got a bunch of good information on this. Um, but if it's the only way you can cut this, then this is the way we're gonna freaking do it, all right? So I'm gonna bring you guys all over here. We're gonna lay this out with this. I'm gonna show you how to make sure all your stuff is straight and then uh, mark it out. We're gonna cut it with a torch, then we're gonna mark another one out and I'll show you a skinny wheel, all right? I don't wanna use a skinny wheel, but, oh yeah, I do, I got one right there. I will show you use this to a certain degree, all right? I'm not gonna cut all the way through one of these. Um, it just takes too long, it's a lot of work, and it's loud, and it throws a ton of sparks. Let's get started on this. We're gonna lay this thing out. This is an eight inch piece of pipe. We got us a wrap around. I'll bring you over here. Let's... All right, so what we got here is we got a wrap around. Now these do come in different sizes, but the main objective of this wrap around is if you have this on here crooked, it will not line up. So you wanna make sure it is as tight as you can get it, for one. You just keep working it around until they line up down the seams beautifully so when you go to wrap this thing it's it's you don't need to wrap it like i am right here where the whole wrap around is wrapped around but you can see but when you look at it you can see there's no edges it's not running off on one side it's not doing anything that means that this wrap around is sitting flat and straight with this piece of pipe which is important when you want to cut something now we back beveled something off of here so hence all the slag but the next important part of this whole thing is a sharp soapstone. The, the, the tighter line you can get, the more accurate it's gonna be. Okay. We're gonna run through all the way around. Okay, so that's gonna be our cut line. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this other side of this because I know this is on here straight. And I'll show you the skinny wheel on this side of it. So this is our perfectly straight lines. Now, when you guys go to cut this piece of pipe, you have to be super conscious of what this tip is doing. My suggestion to you is you would rather have it be long going this way away from the piece that you're gonna keep than being this way, if that makes sense. So if you're this way, you're cutting into the pipe, which means that you gotta grind all this material back for one, and it's just a ton of work. And for two, now you're freaking, you're a quarter inch small because you cut it backward into where you wanna be. So, suggestion is, if you are gonna angle it, and if you're just in such a weird, awkward spot that you just can't seem to get this thing straight, it is better to be cutting away from the piece of pipe that you're gonna be using. Number one, it creates less work, Number two, it, um, it's not eating up your, your piece of pipe that you're gonna be keeping. So, like I said guys, it's all about the angle. I would rather keep it pretty straight up and down, but if you can't do that, always kick, the, kick your torch head a little bit back to you so that it's kicking out away from the piece you're, that you're wanting to save. 
Now on this one, if we were gonna hand cut this one with the torch, we would have the torch angled towards us so that it's cutting this way. That way it's not getting into our piece of pipe that's right here. So I'm gonna get set up, get some glasses, and we're gonna get this thing cut. Like I said, better to be straight up and down or kicking away from here. And that way it's not cutting in. This is the piece we're keeping. This is the piece we don't care about. Good old flame going. Okay. Now we're cutting, we're starting it out away from us. We're on our scrap piece. We're gonna cut into it and then bring it to the line. Now guys, if you're gonna do this in the field, and a lot, a lot of stuff's gonna be done in the field, you're gonna wanna start on the bottom. Okay, that's where we're at. Okay, so that is, I could have probably taken a little more time on that, made it look a little nicer. Now, there is another deal that you can do is you can mark back another quarter inch right here and then sit here and kind of blow a bevel on it. Um, I'm not that good at that, so like if I was to put this in the field and I needed to make a hand cut and get the piece of pipe out of the way so I'd like I could put a T in here say that I'm not gonna sit there and try to hand cut that bevel on there I would rather grind the bevel on because I'm better at grinding them on than I am at hand cutting them and guys when it comes to welding your gaps everything and so you can either really hinder yourself and make it really very difficult or you can uh, Liner discs. These discs are freaking awesome. They will eat a lot of material really quickly. Um, the thing about a grinding disc that you got to be careful about is if you're sitting here grinding on this thing and you're somewhere like in here, you've got to remember that you're wearing this disc out. And so eventually this thing's going to blow to pieces coming from, you know, wherever you're being the most aggressive on it, uh, the top of it's going to just blow out. And, that's with any disc, it doesn't matter what disc you use. If you are not careful with these things, they will eat your flipping lunch. So be careful with the grinding disc. Um, I prefer an eighth inch disc, uh, seven inch, seven inch disc, eighth inch wide. Um, you guys, we don't use guards in the shop. We probably should. But when I first started helping and first started welding, guards were not a requirement on the job. They were not something that needed to be, you could wear regular boots, you could, no FRs. Um, and you didn't have to have guards, but Nowadays you have to have guards. I tend to cut my guards down unless they specify that we cannot cut them down And then I have another set of guards that are full guards, but In this video, I am not going to use a guard now. That's personally up to you if you want to use them or don't um, I did have a flapper disc come back and smoke me in the face and if I can find that video I'll throw it up on here for you, but guard or no guard it hit me in the face Anyways, so there's that. Okay, let's grind this on. Um, I'm gonna show you the difference between what a flapper disc will do and what a grinding wheel will do. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten this up, make sure it's squared, and then go from there. So we're gonna need a grinding disc for that. Okay, so one thing you're not gonna wanna do is sit here and try to flatten this area out and then try to flatten this area out and then come over here and you know you don't want to be doing that you want to make full circles full circles and if it looks like you're eating something up that too much stay away from that area full circle hit a little harder maybe take a little bit more time right there and then skip through that area okay this is going to make a way flatter bevel it's not going to be as wavy and 
way B is a pain in the butt. So, let me show you how to get this done. We got a grinding disc on. So I hit, so what I do is I hit the majority of the rough off. I don't go all the way down to where it's flat because when I do that, I'm gonna grind the bevel on and then when I put the land on, it's gonna be flat anyway. So there's really no reason to be wasting so much disc trying to clean all this up when I'm gonna just get rid of 90% of it anyway. So just run it around, get most of the rough off of it. And then, uh, and then we're going to put a bevel on it. I'm going to use Jet's welding hood because it has a flip-up lens in it. And some earplugs. I want the back of the bevel to be the same all the way down the pipe. Now hopefully that makes sense. Um, it will as soon as I start grinding on this, which I'm going to do right now. So we're going to start with the, with the flat disc. The hard disc. And we're going to grind a little bit of it on there. And then I'm gonna grind a little bit with the uh, flapper disc. Now what you're gonna notice with the flapper disc is it's gonna be a lot more round. It's, it, and it's hard to make them flat. If you really pay attention, you can make them flat. It's not too, for somebody that's experienced in it, it's not too hard to do, but for somebody that's not, they will have a tendency to round it. And uh, it, it, it creates problems when you try to weld it, like hot passing it or whatever else, it's gonna to wanna to try to dig into that. But uh, anyways, let's get started on this. We're gonna start with the hard disk first. Okay, now when you guys go to grinding these bevels on, flat. You want to be flat. So if you start really grinding into this thing like this, you're gonna wind up leaving a really wavy bevel or you're gonna cut into it and, uh, and just cause a lot of trouble for yourself. So flat is that. Okay. okay guys, so as you can see right up here, this is what I want the bevel to look like all the way across this thing. So one way you can really doll up a bevel is if you really pay attention to just this top edge and take the rest of this out to this point, if that makes sense. So you're, you're eating up enough material to make it flat all the way across like this, all right? flat. Now, <clears throat> there will be a certain degree that you have to take this to. Um, I don't know any welders that carry a set of gauges with them, I guess is what you would say. I don't know anybody that carries them. The inspectors are usually the ones that carry them and they'll check every now and then. I've probably seen a handful of inspectors check bevels. But, uh, I believe it's 37 degrees is what this needs to be kicked back to. Um, if you guys are practicing, kick it back farther. I mean, a bigger bevel is gonna, it's gonna give you more practice for one, and for two, I mean, you're gonna learn how to grind a bigger bevel, I guess, I don't know. But uh, anyways, let me show you how straight and flat this thing is, and then we're gonna put a land on it, clean the inside up a little bit, and it should. Okay guys, so you can see, like right here, there's a little bit of a shadow where it kind of took that bevel in like this. So this could probably use just a little bit more grinding right through here. 
but you can tell just how flat that bevel is. Super flat bevel. So, <clears throat> okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the land on this, and like I said, guys, don't just inch your way through this thing, all right, to put a land on it. Uh, get down here, lay the grinder on there flat, and run it around. And the flatter you lay it, and the, the job you did right here is gonna determine just how good your bevel is, all right? Peace. Now, and if you did your job the way you should have, this thing's gonna be freaking perfect. Okay? This thing is, I mean, you could weld that all day long. Let me see if I can get an image here. There you go. So that's what it needs to look like. Run you a four. Side of deal. You can check it in multiple ways just to make sure that you're pretty freaking square. And that's your bevel. All right, guys. So the next thing we're going to do, sorry, let me get this flip back around. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to zip disc this. And I'm not going to go all the way through it, okay? Everybody got the idea. It's the same process as grinding the bevel on as grinding it on right here. Same exact thing. But the only difference is we're using a skinny wheel to cut this off or a wafer wheel, a zip disc, whatever you want to call them. That's what we're going to use to cut this one. Guys, this next technique I'm going to show you is not a joke. All right, this is super dangerous. Um, I would rather flame cut or use bevelers or any other way than this way of cutting in a bevel. But sometimes it is the only way to cut in your bevel. These are your wafer discs, your zip discs, your skinny wheels. This is what these are, and these are no freaking joke. All right, these things will blow up. Uh, if you tweak them wrong, they'll kick back and freaking cut you open wide open. Now, I'm gonna tell you a story, and I'm not gonna throw any names out because I don't want, I don't know if they want to be noticed or recognized or anything like that, so we ain't gonna say nothing. But when we were working in Colorado, there was a job that was getting done and one of the helpers was using a skinny wheel. Now, I don't know exactly what the freak happened, but it kicked back. And I think what happened is he was trying to grab a flange or whatever and the skinny wheel kicked back and he grabbed it right here in his arm. So basically he's hugging this grinder right here and he grabbed it to try to get it out of him. It cut through his main artery, through his arm, it cut his bicep, uh, it messed him up. And the superintendent that was on the job, that was on that job, wound up saving that kid's life, all because of a skinny wheel. The kid, uh, he's been to physical therapy, he's fine, he's good to go, but I mean, we're talking tourniquet, they tourniqueted him right there on the job, took him to the hospital, and it was, I believe they said a seven hour surgery. So if you use a skinny wheel, and that was on one of our jobs. That was with the company that I was with. So uh, it happens. This stuff is not a joke. So if you use a skinny wheel, be very careful. Pay attention to what you're doing. Okay, so that being said, just be so super freaking careful with a skinny wheel. Uh, yeah, man, they are, they are no joke. They are freaking scary. So let's get into doing this. Um, one of the tricks to a skinny wheel is don't cut too much. Don't put a whole lot of pressure on them. Uh, just let them do the work. Now, just like I said with this, with the angle of the torch, you want it being away from this, right? Well, with this, you want your cut on the, on the side that you're not keeping. So you definitely don't want to cut into this because then you're cutting, you know, 0.045 worth of material out of your piece. Plus, then you still have to grind your bevel on, put your lands on. You're going to be cutting a lot out of it. So. 
Always cut on the side that you don't want, and uh, let's go from there. I am putting a helmet on for this because you never know with that skinny wheel what the heck's gonna happen. I wish I had a beanie. I left all my beanies at the house. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna stay on this side of the line because we want this piece. So straight up and down, and all you're gonna do is just make a little scribe mark. All right, now I'm, my hand's gonna be kinda in the way for a second, but you're gonna wanna rest your hand on here, make your scribe so that it's straight, and then start working it back and forth and getting it cut down to what you want. Um, I'm only gonna cut from here to here probably, and then the rest of it's pretty basic on what you're gonna do. Okay, now that we got our scribe, which is the line that we're gonna be following, then we're gonna just start working it back and forth, back and forth, until it starts cutting through. Okay. So if you don't have a torch, a set of skinny wheels will get the job done too. I did use a skinny wheel a lot of times on a stainless job that we wound up doing. Uh, they would bring me boxes of skinny wheels, uh, wrap around, and a marker. And that's what I got to do for about a month, month and a half. Was cut pipe, hand bevel pipe, do all that. And so the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it and the more that you're gonna be able to fix mistakes, all right? So if you don't have a torch, if you don't have a beveler or if you are in a tight area that you can't get either one of them in, you know? I mean, the torch you can usually get in there, um, but you know, if you have to, for some reason, use a skinny wheel, there you go. Stay on the one side, be super careful, don't put pressure on it. And when it cuts through, it's gonna to wanna to start to kind of pull. So you're gonna to wanna to be ready for that. Hold on to it and just kind of work your way into it slow. Get these things cut slow if you're using a skinny wheel and just be super mindful, safety, safety, safety as far as that goes, okay? So anyways, you guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. It is gonna be a little bit longer of an episode just for the fact that we have so much packed into it. Anyways, you guys, we really appreciate y'all hanging out with us. Be blessed, we'll talk to you here in a bit. See ya.